isopropyl chloride or 2-chloropropane is a secondary haloalkane. I will be making some because it can be used as an alkylating agent and I want to make an organic compound containing an isopropoxy group. The usual way of preparing alkyl chlorides from alcohols is by refluxing the suitable alcohol, in our case that would be isopropyl alcohol, with a mixture of concentrated hydrochloric acid and anhydrous zinc chloride. However, the following synthesis is based on the preparation of cyclohexyl chloride described in Fogel's Practical Organic Chemistry. Instead of using anhydrous zinc chloride, that procedure uses the cheaper and more available anhydrous calcium chloride. For those of you interested, a link is provided in the video description. For making isopropyl chloride, the following chemicals are needed. From left to right, we have anhydrous calcium chloride, the one I used was intended for use in dehumidifiers and was purchased in a supermarket. Next we have isopropyl alcohol and last is technical grade 30 to 32 percent hydrochloric acid, both of which I bought at a hardware store. The quantities of chemicals I used in this experiment are listed on the left side of the screen. They are not shown here but in the workup of my crude product I also used some sodium bicarbonate water and a little more anhydrous calcium chloride. I started by charging a 2 liter flask equipped with a magnetic stirrer with approximately 1000 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. While stirring I added calcium chloride through the addition funnel I washed the beaker that contained the calcium chloride and the addition funnel with the remaining 300 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. After the majority of calcium chloride is dissolved, I added the isopropyl alcohol. When all the reagents are added, I assemble the distillation apparatus that I will be using for this reaction. The 2 liter reaction flask is put in an oil bath on top of a magnetic stirrer and heater. I use a non-connected 25 cm Liebig condenser for a distillation column. On top of this is a 3-way distillation adapter with a thermometer. Then we have my longer 40 cm Liebig condenser, which has cold water running through it. Next is a vertical vacuum distillation adapter because I don't have any angled ones unfortunately. Finally this leads to a 500 milliliter one necked collection flask that sits in a cold water bath. The idea here is that we take advantage of the low boiling point of our product and drive the reaction forward by removing isopropyl chloride from the reaction mixture as soon as it is formed. This way we should maximize yield and minimize reaction time. As the reaction mixture heats up we see evidence of hydrochloride gas coming out of the apparatus. 
It is very important to heat slowly at the beginning so that we do not overheat the reaction mixture because this would lead to an even more vigorous evolution of hydrochloride gas and it could carry away a lot of our low boiling product. After about an hour the reaction mixture was boiling and I began to collect the product at a slow but steady pace. I maintained the heating at such a level that the thermometer on the three-way distillation adapter hovered around 35 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of isopropyl chloride. The distillation is slow and it took me eight and a half hours to collect 330 grams of crude isopropyl chloride. At this point the rate of distillation crawled almost to a stop and I decided that it was no longer worth waiting for the final couple milliliters of product. I disassembled the apparatus and continued the next day. On the left, in a 500 ml one necked flask, is 330 grams of our crude product. On the right, in a 250 ml one necked flask, is 101 grams of crude isopropyl chloride produced in an earlier run. I decided to combine both products and work them up together. As can be seen from the smoke as I charge the 1 liter separatory funnel with both crude products, they are both contaminated with large amounts of dissolved hydrogen chloride gas. After charging the crude products to the 1 liter separatory funnel, I prepared a solution of 24.5 grams of sodium bicarbonate in 300 milliliters of water. After some stirring, I obtained a clear solution of sodium bicarbonate. The combined crude product is washed with the prepared solution of sodium bicarbonate three times, using approximately 100 milliliters each time. When I add the first portion of the sodium bicarbonate solution, we see a lovely and vigorous evolution of gas. This gas is carbon dioxide and it is being formed by the reaction between the sodium bicarbonate and the dissolved hydrogen chloride gas. After careful shaking and frequent venting, the phases are separated and the washing is repeated two more times. On the second addition of sodium bicarbonate solution, there was almost no gas evolution, but to be sure that all of the hydrogen chloride was removed, I performed the third washing with the sodium bicarbonate. The final washing is done with 100 milliliters of distilled water. And as you can see in the video, the phase separation after vigorous shaking is very fast. During all the washings there was no problems with emulsion formation and every time I got a quick phase separation as the one you see now. The washed product is poured in a 500ml one necked flask. I added an arbitrary amount, 3 spatulas, of anhydrous calcium chloride to dry the washed product. Closed the flask and left it standing overnight. The next morning I decanted the product, which should be fairly dry now, into a 500 ml two-necked flask. Next I assemble glassware for simple distillation. The 500 ml two-necked flask is put on an oil bath on top of a magnetic stirrer and heater. The side neck is not needed and is closed with a glass stopper. On top of the flask is a three-way adapter with a thermometer. To the adapter there is connected a 40 cm Liebig condenser which has cold water running through it. Next is a vertical vacuum distillation adapter. Finally, this leads to a 1 liter two-necked collection flask. I start stirring and heating and soon the content of the flask begins to boil and the distillation of the product proceeds at quite a rapid pace. Before the temperature reaches 34 degrees Celsius, only approximately 20 to 25 milliliters distilled over. I emptied the collecting flask and then I collect everything boiling in the range of 34 to 39 degrees Celsius. The majority of the product comes over from 34 to 36 degrees Celsius. There is very little residue left in the boiling flask. The collected product is poured into a pre-weighed 500 milliliter amber glass storage bottle. The isopropyl chloride that I collected weighed 338 grams. This represents an overall yield of 54% based on the starting isopropyl alcohol. Since all the reagents used in this preparation are rather cheap, I'm quite happy with the yield. I believe that the majority of the losses can be explained by the following. If you recall, 
At the beginning, I stopped collecting the crude product after 8.5 hours. This was a decision based on the rate at which the product was distilling. But if I wanted to achieve the maximum yield, I should have run the reaction until no more distillate came over at the appropriate temperature. But this could have taken several more hours with each hour less and less product coming over. Some product was also undoubtedly lost during the first part of the reaction when hydrogen chloride evolution was quite rapid and it carried away some of our product. The final major loss probably occurred as I was working up my crude product. The losses during the neutralization with sodium bicarbonate solution were likely especially high due to vigorous carbon dioxide evolution. That's all for now, have a great day and till next time. Bye!